What's up guys, in this video I'm going to be breaking down exactly what do we mean when you've probably heard some of these terminologies flying around, whether it's cryptocurrency, mining, minting, NFTs, all these different terminologies. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down specifically what is Web 3.0. Now, a lot of you, as I say, are probably thinking Web 3.0. When did we get into Web 3.0? Like, when did we even get to Web 2.0? What was even Web 1.0? Now, before we break this down, I think it's crucial, especially as this space of cryptocurrency, of NFTs, of blockchain development is on the rise right now. So many more people are getting into this space. Now, the problem is there's so many more people getting into it, but so many more people getting into it that are uneducated in it. And the problem with that is basically when you get into this new space, because there's so many things happening, especially when people are investing money, investing their time, investing their energy to learn and developing this stuff. A lot of the times people are losing their money, losing their energy, losing their time to making silly mistakes. Now, when it comes to understanding what exactly do these words mean, how does it affect me? This is what we're going to be breaking down across all of the videos on this Meta Wealth channel. So if you haven't already, make sure to follow the I am creator, the Meta Wealth by IAC Twitter. That's Meta Wealth by IAC. And on there, we'll be breaking it down and sharing with you guys insights and different um, insider analysis on the day, every day. So make sure to follow the Twitter. Also, we're going to be breaking down a lot of things on this channel. Um, we're going to be doing daily videos to make sure that you know everything to do with this crypto space, this NFT space, blockchain, the metaverse and everything that's just that's just skyrocketing right now. So first of all, in this video, we're going to break down what is Web 3.0. But before we break down what is Web 3.0, we start with going back to the basics. So back to the basics being what even is Web 1.0? Now, if you take a timeline of around 1990, 1991 to around 2004, that was when we was in around the web 1.0 phase. Now, what was this phase? This phase was where you go to a website or web page and you literally see um, information and data on something that you're searching. So it would be a page with a bunch of text that you'd read through. So some of you will probably remember that when you had to dial up for internet and everything like that. You literally go to a web page and you read and that's it. Other than that, the most exciting thing you get is probably another image, probably a hyperlink to another web page and that was it. So it's almost like a glorified Wikipedia page, basically. Then around 2004 is where the whole game changed. Now imagine going from a space where all it is is information on a web page. Fair enough, at that moment it's pretty cool. You get to, instead of going to the library, instead of getting all these different random books and trying to find a book, you get to go to a web page and search engines will help you find that web page to get the information that you want. Then as we transition now to web 2.0, where not only do we get information from these pages, but these pages now are starting to get information from us. Now, before all of you conspiracy theorists start to go wild about, I knew it, they were watching me. Yes, they're probably watching you, but we're not gonna get into that right now. What we are gonna be speaking about is now how privacy on the internet has changed. Meaning that, for example, I could go to a website right now, I could go to Facebook, I could go to, let's just use the example of Facebook. I could go to Facebook right now, log in, you can go to Facebook right now, log in, and your experience will be completely different. It's the same website that you're clicking, facebook.com, but your experience, what you see, will be completely different based on all the inputs, all the things that you've done on your time, not only on that platform, and this is where really Web 2.0 um, changed, because it's not only how you interact with the platform, but it's also how you interact with everything across the internet. Meaning if you go onto the internet, you look for some new sneakers, what you will then find is actually on your Facebook feed, you may find some adverts for those specific sneakers or for some other sneakers because cookies, all these things on the internet are tracking you, are following you. But from a user perspective, it enhances your experience because now not only are you seeing things that are completely random, but you're seeing things that are completely tailored to your experience. So this Web 2.0 era is more of a time where now you are kind of, in a way, benefiting from the information, benefiting because it's free, but at the same time, you're also handing over some of your data, whether it's your email address, your phone number, your name, for that data. So you give your data, you then allow them to maybe even package up your data and to sell it to other companies to benefit them and 
your user experience is how they will say it. So now we're transitioning now from a space where you're in essence handing over your information, handing over your data to navigate on the internet and handing it over to a more centralized platform like Facebook. For example, what do we mean by centralized? For example, around three, four months ago, you may have remembered this, but Facebook, WhatsApp and Instagram were all down for a few hours. Now, when they were down, it means that I couldn't go onto Facebook, you couldn't go onto Facebook, all your data, all your pictures that you uploaded on there, you could no longer access. All that information that Facebook had on you, you had on Facebook, you could no longer access. So a cool way to see this, we just jump on the, the laptop right now. Centralization basically is showing you here. If this user here, whether you, some people will call it a user, some will call it a node, some will call it even a company, depending on how we're looking at this. But if this was to go, every single person who's interacting with this node, with this user, with this company can no longer access it, can no longer access all the stuff that's stored on there, all the things that you're looking for on there. Now, if we compare this to decentralization, and this will come in very handy when we're understanding Web 3.0 and as we move forward, especially in the blockchain, what's happening here is if one of these nodes, one of these users, one of these companies, let's just take, for example, this one is removed. It means that this company can still stay put. This company's data can still stay there because all these other data points, all these other people have the information on this company. So now it's as we transition to Web 3.0, and before we move on, let's take a look at the official definition of what exactly is Web 3.0. So according to Google, it's stating that Web 3, short for 3.0, is a vision of the future of the internet in which people operate on a decentralized, quasi-anonymous platforms rather than depend on tech giants like Google, Facebook, and Twitter. So now it's in a sense where you're no longer dependent upon big corporations, big companies, or even CEOs and these different big platforms. Um, for the experience now is the case whereby you are no longer the product now i know some of you will be thinking you are no longer the product i never was the product when i was on the internet but there's this saying and it goes something like when you're not paying for something you are the product so just like when you're browsing on facebook browsing on google browsing on the internet you're not paying for it but you're the product because what they want is they want you to spend more time on their platform they want you to engage on their platform that's where they show you ads that are specific to you so you will keep coming back. But now with Web 3.0 and the way that the internet's moving with cryptocurrency, with Bitcoin, with blockchain, mean that all these different um, transactions, all these different interactions on this space is locked. And it's there for everyone to see, it's there for forever, okay? So I think the key takeaway for this, this video is to understand and appreciate that as we transition into Web 3.0, it's understanding that now you, the user, are able to take back your power. Now you're able to not only be interacting with the platforms and doing whatever they say, now this is gonna be in a shared open source space where by your interaction on the internet are gonna be very different. So it's an exciting space to be in, it's an exciting um, era to be in, just like when the dot com bubble was happening and all these different things were happening, all these different places to even make money. Now as Web 3.0, if you can be the innovator in this industry, then actually, so much can change for you. So that's the main message for this video today. Um, if you got any value from this video, you understand the difference between Web 1.0, 2.0, 3.0 and how we're transitioning, then make sure to hit the like button. Also, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification button next to it so that way you do not miss any of our daily videos where us here on the Metal channel, we're gonna be sharing with you exactly what you can do in this crypto space, in this metaverse space, in this NFT space, in this blockchain space to not only have some fun, not only benefit, but also reach more abundance, reach more wealth, and really understand this, especially in this time where it's gonna be the biggest transition of wealth that we've ever seen. So make sure you're ahead of the game, make sure you understand this terminology. If there's anything in particular you want me to go deeper on from this video or anything you want us to cover on this channel, make sure to log it in the comments section below. We're gonna be checking the comments on every video and making sure that you guys understand and are ahead of the game. Other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video.